Alrighty, alrighty, here is a quick video of basically using the k-means approach um, to create clusters out of genotypic SNP data. So before you get started, there's quite a few of pa quite a few packages to install. Uh, it's pretty straightforward if you can get them all installed. Um, not all of them will be used for this part of the tutorial, but I install them nonetheless uh, because I will need them later or further down. Um, set my work working directory where my genotypic data is, and then I can bring in my genotypic data, which is this file here, which is essentially just a list of 292 genotypes um, down one column, the row names, and then the column names are essentially uh, SNP, uh, SNP names, and here are all the different SNPs here that I've read on already. This table takes some time to read in, so I'm not going to do it now. I did it before, beforehand. And then I uh, essentially just cut out um, the data, um, cut out the uh, SNP data so that it was just the, the, the data of interest. Um, the metadata is cut out, cut out, and then I bring in some metadata from a different file, essentially um, the genotype names, country of origin, uh, stem determinants, and other descriptor variables. Next, uh, we step into um, finding the optimal number of clusters uh, using the iterative k-means approach. So we have our um, genotypic data here. And what we do is rerun this approach, and I'm not going to run it right now because it takes some, some time, but this uh, function essentially just makes a, a gene ID uh, object for, uh, to, for to be used uh, later in, this, in, the, um, in the process. And then once we've created this object, um, we use the find clusters to iterate through the object uh, using the k-means approach to identify the number of clusters or set the number of clusters that we should or that we're interested in. And um, I have it set up right now to have the max number of clusters um, for the k-means to break it into as being 20 and for the number of PCA plots for it to use is up to, up to 200 uh, and the scale um, is to be false because this is SNP, I, SNP data. Uh, we don't need to scale it. If it was um, some other type of data like phenotypic data, then yes, we would we would scale, and that's what I've done down here. So it, it creates this BIC plot, and for some reason the uh, axes are missing. Um, but starting at two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Actually, I believe that's one, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight, nine. So nine would be ideal, but it even starts eight, seven, six. Uh, it even starts to plateau at six. So I'm going to um, take uh, six as my approach. And so it's asking me down here to choose the number of clusters. Uh, so you have to wait until this completes. So I'm going to enter six and enter. And away we go. So um, now moving on, I'm going to skip this because this is for the, the phenotypic data. So I've set it up kind of in parallel with my genotypic data. And I'm just going to look at the table, table out the data. And so for my six clusters, I have got the genotypes split up actually quite rather uh, quite, quite evenly. And basically now that I, uh, that I have a list of the genotypes and the clusters that they're going to be in, I essentially just want to create a, a data frame. There we go. And add the name, uh, names and the subpopulation or the cluster um, to that. And do the same for the phenotypic data, and then I can output it to a CSV. Essentially, what it what it looks like is now just the name of the genotype and the cluster, or also called the subpopulation of where that genotype is. 
and away you go. We'll be ready for the next step.